Let's talk on question 7 of assignment 1 because you insist. As per a previous post on Piazza, we have not covered in detail all the theory necessary to tackle this exercise in an organized manner. However, I welcome the energy and the passion of those in the class who are chomping at the bit, willing to try their forces at this exercise, even as of now we're not ready, but let's oblige anyway. That is the circuit, a simple one. So far we have introduced several ideal components. The ideal resistor, the ideal inductor, the ideal capacitor. You say, what? Those are equations. But an ideal inductor is that equation, and an ideal resistor is this one. The symbol we use in schematics is just a graphical representation for that equation. The resistor is V is Ri, the inductor is V is L D I D T, and the capacitor is I C D V D T, the way we introduced them in our class. What others? The independent voltage source, IVS. The V plus is the V minus of the source plus the value of the source. Or if you prefer, if you prefer, V plus minus V minus is Vs, which is a way of saying the higher terminal is above the lower terminal by the value of the source, whatever the source says, 5 volts, 10 volts, whatever. And the other one is the independent ideal current source. The value of the current through that source is whatever the source says, I guess, could even be a function of time. Let's introduce another element, a new element, if you will the ideal conductor between points A and B in a circuit. Let's think of it as if it's a resistor with a resistance R of 0 ohms. From Ohm's law, the voltage difference between VI and VB is going to be RI. V is RI, but R is 0, so that means that whatever the current through the ideal conductor, the voltage difference between VI and VB is going to be 0. In other words, the ideal conductor will guarantee that VA is equal to VB, whoever A and B are, and whatever the current is flowing through the ideal conductor. That is irrelevant. This is, this is an idealization. Then we introduce a new concept and name a true node or just uh, the node. Out of convenience, we will define the, as a node the part of the circuit that is joined by ideal conductors. Just a way of introducing that. A consequence of that definition is that all the points in such a node have the same voltage, the same electric height above the chosen reference. In the circuit of our interest, in A1Q7, let's identify such nodes. But before that, let me give you the value of the ideal sources. Vs is a 5-volt source, and Is is a 2 milliamps current source. Now let's identify the nodes. Remember, areas in the circuit that are joined by ideal conductors. This one, yeah, I'm going to call that node uh, 1, for lack of a better name, and this is node 2. And at the bottom, there is um, another node yet uh, that has been given to us as a reference for our solution. So there is a reference. The voltage of that reference node, by convention, is 0. And there is a fourth node. That little tiny little thing there, x, is also a node. But a little node is joining only two elements, while the others are joining more than two. Well, in this course, we will label a node that joins only two elements a binary node. And in our solutions, uh, that will play a lesser role uh, than the other nodes, the nodes that join more than two elements. So we call true nodes the one with more than two elements, and a node like X, a binary node. And in this exercise, I will just simplify in series 3.9 kilos with 5.9, 5.1 kilos, and that way we disappear node X, and we don't even think about that at all. The voltage source on the left is guaranteeing that the voltage of node 1 is 5 volts, of course. The bottom is at 0 volts, it's a reference. The source is guaranteeing that the top is higher than the lower, by 5 volts, of course, V1 is 5 volts. What else? We do not know what is V2. We do not know how high above the reference node 2 is. Let's call that just V2. And the resistor's voltage on the top of the branch has a voltage 5 minus V2. So how much higher the node on the left is than the node on the right across that resistor? 
And if we were to draw how much higher the right is than the left, then we write that as v2 minus 5 and the plus on the right. And it will be exactly the same value. You know that from our discussion in class. But if we draw that polarity, we have to draw the current of the resistor as flowing downhill according to Ohm's law. According to Ohm's law, if we know the voltage phi minus V2 in that 1000 ohm resistor, we know the current that is phi minus V2 divided by 1000. That is the current, and the current has this direction, from the chosen high to the chosen lower node. If we had chosen the polarity backwards, then we would have drawn the, the arrow flowing the other way, but the voltage in that case would be V2 minus 5, and would be exactly the same current. The same way we will compute all the other currents. That would be 5 minus V2 over 2000, this one. And here would be V2 minus 0 over 3000. And then on the far right, V2 minus 0 over 9000 ohms. One thing, that little current, 2 milliamps, I will write that as a rational number. Instead of writing 0 0.002 ohms, I'm going to write that 2 divided by 1000. And there's a reason for that. That is the equation we need. You say, equation what? Well, we have only one unknown that I can identify here, which is V2, right? We need only one equation, and Kirchhoff's presents us with a perfect opportunity to apply its current law and write an equation on node number two. Currents going into node number two, at least two, the ones on the top, right? The ones on those two resistors. If phi minus V2 over 1,000, phi minus V2 over 2,000. And currents leaving the node, the three on the bottom. Those are the three. Observe again that the current uh, source uh, value, 2 milliamps, is written out of convenience for a reason that I tell you in a moment as 2 divided by 1,000. That's a rational number instead of a floating point number. The reason is this. Let me go to Wikipedia and read what it means, CAS. CAS, Computer Algebra System. That is an acronym in industry. A computer algebra system, as I'm reading from Wikipedia, donate if you can afford it. Even a dollar is useful. It's a worthy cause. A computer algebra system, CAS, is any mathematical software that has the ability to manipulate mathematical expressions in a way similar to the traditional manual computations of mathematicians and scientists, and I must add, of engineers. The development of the computer algebra systems in the school in the second half of the 20th century is part of a discipline called computer algebra or symbolic computation. To my students in class, I strongly advise you to take one such course. And this has spurred work in algorithms over mathematical objects such as polynomials. In the HP prime, you find also a CAS mode but we need to set it on before we use it. I have found uh, that in all CAS software that I've worked with, Mathematica and Maple, and, and you name it, uh, in, in small computers and laptops and mainframes, they always have worked better for me when I use rational numbers instead of floating point numbers. And there is a reason for that. And this is not the time and the place to talk about that. So I recommend that you work with rational numbers when you are in CAS mode on the HP Prime. But before doing that, we need to set up the CAS mode. How? Blue shift, the CAS key for settings of CAS. This menu appears here, that dialog box. And there we will concentrate on clicking the exact node. Exact node means I will provide all the numbers as rationals, uh, and you are also to give me all the answers as rational numbers, as fractions, right? No floating point numbers. Also, I will clear the buttons for complex. I don't care for having complex numbers in my solutions, and this in this part of the course, not yet. And also clear the use of the imaginary unit I. None of that. And we're ready. Let's enter that equation. I made a boo-boo instead of calling that KCL2 the way it, it should be. I wrote that KCL1 in what follows, but uh, that is just a label. It's just a name. I'm calling the equation by any name. You can call that John or Mary if you want. I call that KCL1. Should have been KCL2. Define colon equal, and then I write the definition for the equation. Phi minus V2 over 1,000. Observe that I'm using lowercase, because uppercase V2 has a meaning for the calculator, so let's not go there. 
five minus V2 over 2000. That is equal to the currents that are leaving the node. And again, I emphasize use rational numbers as, as um, for every number that you have, 2 over 1000, 2 milliamps. And the other current ones we have, and that equation defined as case hill one, we can solve it with the solve uh, functionality of the CAS mode. With the name SOL, S O L, you could have called that my solution or whatever. Solve the equation of case hill one for variable V2. Give an approximate value of that with shift enter, you approximate that. Or better, it, let me. Um, put in a variable v2. Let me define a variable v2, colon equal definition, with the evaluation in floating point of the first term inside the list sol, and that way we have a variable that has the voltage v2, 2.83 volts, and that way we can compute, for instance, the current on the top resistor, which is um, phi minus v2 over a thousand. Remember, and that is I top 2.17 milliamperes. And the same way we could compute all the other currents and then compute all the other uh, all the uh, all the powers in the circuit and use telegand to see if you close powers and, and all those things. It is a convenience actually to um, label your results in an exam. And that is all my students. Thank you very much. I hope this has been of some use, at least of entertainment to you all. See you tomorrow in class.